Howdy folks. Uh, I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, you know, I'm trying to keep that schedule, you know, coming out with the Twitch side chat every Friday. But it's been a weird week for me, but uh, be that as it may, we got Twitch side chat 18 ready for you. Um, basically talking about the member berries. Um, if you've got some uh, memories written to stone that you'll never forget, aside from, you know, 9 11 or anything like that, uh, definitely, you know, say it in the comments. And it doesn't have to be just about America, it's got to be anywhere else you're from. I know I have some uh, subscribers here on YouTube that span the globe. So, uh, with that said, let's get it cracking. Uh-huh. Fuck, I, I screwed that one up. gentlemen here we are uh we're, do we're doing the member berries we're gonna look at what's uh uh stamped indelibly in our in our brain pans our brain cages the gray matter whatever um it's gonna be a little mix between um serious shit and funny shit and uh we've already got some things queued up for you guys and um i, I do believe that uh brick is here and he's got some input that he uh has put in last minute because he joined last minute that's all good uh also joined with me is crept kish and elmo how are you gentlemen doing doing pretty good good okay let me i'm trying to figure out okay i'm, I'm having technical difficulties here we go uh do do do, do. where is there's the is it is it the left scene hey there we are all right yeah, cheers, i just cheers, got cheers. eaten by a fucking black hole <laughs> yes it's, I, I've, I've been doing stuff and things anyway brick where's your where's your ugly face Huh? 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 You want my ugly ass mug on your fucking Twitch side? Yeah, I mean, if they have to deal with my face, they might as well deal with your face too. I mean, are you saying your face is worse than my face? Wow. Hey, Four yeah, Eyes. Yeah, I mean, Hi, Four yeah, Eyes. How you doing? I got, I got a plug in my other camera. Hold on. No, no. What's wrong with your camera? I see that. Oh, thank God he's wearing pants. Anyway. started. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, this is going to be a, kind of a, uh, a psychosocial type freaking thing. Oh, wow. Look at that. He's got multiple cameras. What the shit? He's not even a he's streamer. Got angles. Yeah, he's got angles. Uh, well, one's my laptop and the other's my, uh, I don't know, my Logitech cam. I don't know. Wow. So how many Coke yeah. bottles had to die for your glasses? Uh, ten. Ten? Shit. Almost exactly. had you beat. Well, ten, ten, ten per uh, frame. So 20. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so let's get into it. All right. Um, what I have here is a failure to figure out where my damn screens are. Uh, so we did that. We could get rid of that and that. So uh, first up is the Britney Spears shaving the head. Okay. Before, after. No, no. I mean, that's that's like straight up crazy. And, and the only thing I have to say about this is the thing stands out. I mean, she was a good looking singer, you know, you know, like, you know, way back in the day. And then she got crazy. I think was, what was it? Kevin Federline guys. I think so. Um, that K fed. That time. Yeah. What a fucking douche nozzle. Anyway. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he made her go crazy or maybe that was a pre existing condition. Either way. That's like, damn dude. Could you imagine being her father and be like, you done fucked up, girl. You done fucked up. Well, that's why she was freaking really under that up. that uh, that thing for a while, where she wasn't able to like do anything on her own for a while. Right. Just got her freedom back like last year. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, I don't. She didn't have control over anything. Well, she good. Didn't have control over her life at all. Well, I mean, if she's gonna go off the freaking deep end and do this shit, then she doesn't. No, right. she doesn't. 
No, she doesn't need any control, like, at all. Fucking cray-cray as hell. And then right after she gets her control back, what does she do? She goes cray-cray again and decides to post a bunch of naked pictures of herself. Well, I mean, I, I mean, if it's only good for only friends or only fools, <laughs> I mean, come on. Only fools. <laughs> But uh, no, okay. So like, if she did, if she decided to shave her head again, like this this time of year, people would be like, "Oh, she's a Nazi." But I don't know, man. That's some crazy shit. Um, up next, (laughs) you boys know what was coming. Um, the uh, Jackson, the Jack, the nip of Jackson's revenge. You guys remember that at the Super Bowl? I actually remember. remember watching that on TV. Yeah. I remember seeing that live. Yeah, and then uh, the, many people didn't see it live. And um, apparently, uh, I think YouTube, this is b- way back in the day, YouTube was trying to freaking make a go of it. And then they said, hey, people want to see this. And so that was the very first like viral, before it was viral, uh, video that took off on YouTube. If, if memory serves. Crazy. I could, yeah, I could, yeah, I could be wrong. But I mean, that was like... How long ago? I think that, was, that was like 2000 and something. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is, is that, uh, where was it? So, uh, so Timberlake, he gets to the lyric, I'm going to have you naked by the end of the song. He oopsie poopsied uh, her friggin' bodice, whatever the hell that's, that is. You know, something that you know covers the, the tatas. And uh, showed off um, the, the the gumdrops, as it were. <laughs> the gumdrops. Yeah, but like I, I I still think it's premeditated. I mean, there, we could do a whole deep dive on that yeah, by yeah. itself, but yeah. uh, I'd rather not, because like you know, I mean, she was, I, she, I think she dropped off the face of the earth as far as as pop, popular culture was concerned. But uh, yeah, I still think it was premeditated Back, because no. she had like a freaking pasty on, dude. I was like, really. Yeah, so, like, why would I mean? Yeah, yeah, I definitely. Think why would you put that on? That. Yeah. So, uh, Brad with the clutch here. We, uh, he, he, he said, "What about the Apollo missions?" Because I told him what we had. He goes, "That's all bullshit. Why has it got to be pop culture?" Rah, rah, rah. I'm like, "Yeah, that's her point." And he came up with the Apollo, you know, the Apollo missions, the Apollo program. That is like stamped on a lot of older people's brains, and we see what we did, and we see where things are now. And it's it's kind of shit, to be honest. It, it it it's not where it should be. Um, I mean, I try to keep it light, try to keep it fun here, but uh, I I see what we were capable of during one of the most bloody um decades in American history, and how much we actually accomplished. Mm-hmm. And we see what's going on with all the freaking bullshit, you know, the insanity out there. Um, that's I don't know, man. It, it's uh. Makes me sad. Makes me sad. But anyway, back to the yeah. cool shit. <laughs> I mean, dude, I, okay. I, oh, wait, you got something? I'm a space geek. I, well, I'm just going to say, I'm a space geek. So, I mean, I, I think Apollo missions were like, it was a defining moment for people. Like, it, oh, it it's something was. that, yeah, like the space race and everything with Russia, um, mm-hmm. doing something that was said to be impossible um, in a time where, you know, technology is nowhere near what it is now um so that was like for for our parents that was a defining part of their childhood or our grandparents depending how old you are but i mean that led to where we are today with missions possibly going to mars in the next decade well that's that's more spearheaded by by private industry i think um but uh there's something there's something that you said that i actually want to like kind of unpack a little bit Okay, um, so I'm 45 this month, okay? And um, my parents, they, they didn't find excuses. They found, they found solutions. Okay, I was born in 1979. Yes, I'm dating myself, especially with that AOL sound, right? But, um, mm-hmm. you know, I was just a young tyke, you know, sitting there getting that Pavlov's uh, whatever. I'm not going to go there. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> those of you who know, no, but um, the one of the things that I think that you know uh, have changed in the last twenty plus years is that um, we didn't 
find excuses to not do a thing. We found excuses to do a thing. And, you know, the, the that watershed moment of John F. Kennedy, you know, announcing his intentions to land a moon on the moon and those other things in this decade. Um, th that was that was from fear. I mean, the Russians beat us on every single point of the space race. And what start what sparked all of that was Sputnik. Sputnik was the mm -hmm. first artificial satellite orbiting the Earth. And all it was there doing, it was transmitting a radio signal. Do -do 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 -do. That was it. And it had everybody's panties in a wad. Like, oh shit. And if you think about it, you know, military speaking militarily speaking, you don't want to take a hill, you want to be on the hill. And the ultimate you know, uh, hill hill for the military stuff is space, and then landing somebody on the moon or whatever. So, um, it, it's it's amazing on how much need the guys during you know that took place in the Apollo missions, and uh, I think there was another set of missions that uh, that kind of Mercury, the Mercury missions. I think the Mercury missions came first, didn't they? Berk? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. So, um, yeah, and then you you fast forward to. 2023 and like oh well it's too expensive i mean we we don't have a going concern on the moon and you think we should but i mean i'm just a dumb guy with a microphone so what do i know right but uh yeah it it, it there's definitely a, a a change a paradigm shift in our society about that but um moving on to something uh more important uh how about christina aguilera handing the eminem the award that this is her for the song that he Gets the award for. Oh, this was great. Yeah, that was great. That was hilarious. Like, um, and the and the worst part was is like back then. <laughs> and I, mean, I was like, fuck, I gotta go up there and get this from this. Oh, shit, man. Even does the eye roll. Yeah, he, and that was the best part is that he like at first rolled his eyes in the crowd and was like, I really have to go up there and get this from her. And she doesn't and give it to him. Like, She's like, nah. <laughs> Yeah, she just kind of throws she it. She holds on to it. It's like, do I really want to do this? As, he, as soon as he starts walking up, he starts fucking. He, he goes, smiling. oh, He's fuck, like, man. oh, this is great. This is gold. Like, that is like, that wasn't another mm, plan. irony. I feel like I that was that another was. planned thing. See, I don't think that one was. No, it couldn't have been planned, in all honesty, that one, because he was just blowing up at that point. It was just the yeah. way that that transpired. Um, they used to put like public beefs on display a lot more i feel yeah. like like things like that i think it was um, definitely planned just they didn't know about it right people behind Neither the scenes knew about it and they're like oh this is gonna be <laughs> dude there's like an yeah, ultimate show yeah, doing yeah. clickety clackety oh man who's giving them the award yeah who dissed her eminem oh this is <laughs> gold yep yeah, and reddit and 4chan was born <laughs> <laughs> yes yes oh that's hilarious that stuff was just like like things like that back in the day that we now can blatantly like look at and see are a blatant setup you know like this is a definite like a setup thing it's 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 like for reality tv the difference in reality tv like what we used to watch back in the day for reality TV. all right hold up Bro um, big brother was 100 percent scripted man all that reality yeah. bullshit is scripted and it was like no yeah, it's juicy shore is it was yeah. more believable is what i'm saying back then yeah. it felt way more believable because it wasn't something that was a, a of the norm yet right so so like i guess we were privileged in our um in our insolence i guess like not knowing things privileged like, insolence you really think somebody could script snooki like that bitch was out of control no. no i don't think like that's the weird part is that like is that shows back then felt they were um you could tell that they were semi-scripted but like the personalities weren't yeah but then you learn about like there's people nowadays that are showing up on um on plenty of different uh uh, reality TV shows and you realize they literally have been doing this for 15 years they've been on six different reality shows it's all like, old hat by now right they just keep repeating it yeah well they I mean look at the it. formula stuff that they have for yeah. Marvel movies and shit it's all the same shit dude it's like this oh, this yeah. this dude 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 here's the beats well and that's me, another yeah. thing that kills me is like have you ever seen the video of uh I think it's it's a Brad Pitt 
or or somebody who whoever played um in uh Goodwill Hunting. He was Oh he Ben was Affleck and uh, uh Matt Damon. Matt Damon, yeah. yeah. So uh he was sitting there talking about how, you know, he misses the days where he could be a uh a romance movie guy. But they just don't make those movies anymore because they're looking for the quick buck. Like, well, I mean, uh, Bruce Willis was a romance guy, and then he broke into uh, action star like Die Hard. Right. So, yeah. well, I mean, yeah. We really want to go there all the way. I mean, uh, uh, the Italian Stallion was, was a <laughs> porn star. Oh, so, yeah. I mean... Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, so that was – I thought that was kind of funny. Was like, we're always about the music here on the, on the Prague and Pac stream. I really wish Pac-Man was around. Anyway, um, so the next one, I, I really want to do a deep dive on this. But uh, we're gonna have to gloss over. <laughs> uh, poor choice of 90% words. Ninety percent of it. <laughs> oh boy, I, I used the wrong word. Gloss. Anyway, uh, yeah. Monica Lewinsky. Um, yeah. For those of you who know, Monica Lewinsky uh, did uh, change my mind. She did what she could for her country. She's a, a patriot. A service. <laughs> yeah, she did. What did. Needed to be done. So, um, yeah that that was the picture Obviously, back in 1997. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and, uh, she was trying to make sure our commander in chief, uh, was staying, um, properly what's... stress free. Yes. Stress free. <laughs> yes. He was take he... down those pants. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clinton, take down those pants. That's like, oh my God, that's Ronald Reagan. Mr. Gorbachev, take down. Oh, that's another one. Yes. That, that, that is the joke I made. Yes. On, yes. Man. Well, a lot of people aren't going to get that. You're not dude. Go ahead and pause this. You know if you're watching this on YouTube, go find another one. Uh, go open up another tab on YouTube and fucking type in Ronald Reagan, Gorbachev, and Wall. And I should Berlin get... Wall. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Gorbachev, the well, Berlin and, Wall. And, yeah. and this man this man gets absolutely railroaded out of the presidency for, for something that our beloved John F. Kennedy was doing pl in plain... Which happened to be Clinton's yeah. hero. Right. <laughs> The male Clinton, I mean, not the female, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, like you look at uh, back in the day with uh, John F. Kennedy, he was he was our golden child, I guess, and he was he was doing some very questionable things to Maryland. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. He <laughs> lit a funny. fire underneath the ass of oh, yeah. all them freaking Nazi scientists we did to jumpstart our NASA program and to get somebody yes. up on the moon and those other things. So. He gets a pass, brother. Yes. He gets a pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I mean, it, like, it's just, she gave, you know, we actually scrolled down and she actually gave a TED talk in 2015. <laughs> apparently <laughs> about, um, sexuality. Yeah, right, right there, 2015. And I, I ain't gonna lie. I'd smash. Her, 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 her nose job looks great. That's the Clinton <laughs> money right there, buddy. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, moving on. I'm I'm dating myself right now. Okay, so I played the shit out of Duke Nukem 3D. And this happens to be a screenshot straight from that game. Okay. Down here you got your weapons, you know, you hit two and you get the pistol, three, I think is the shotgun, four is the machine gun, five, I forget what that is. But anyway, these are all the different weapons you got and your ammo, all that happy bullshit, you know, whatever. But right there. Doink. Oh, God. That right there um, is a little pixelated, but uh, that right there is actually a pixelated version of a very famous white Bronco carrying a actor slash an actor slash uh, football, football player, player. Um, that For is synonymous with a complete Buffalo part game. of your breakfast. OJ Simpson. Say what you want. He is, I, I guess you could say he's mostly nonviolent, but not on the day where uh, somebody died. He canceled or the day that he beat the crap out of somebody for his memorabilia back. Yeah, that too. Um, <laughs> but it, it's stuff. And like, I, I, I could be wrong, guys. But OJ Simpson wasn't even going to trial when this game was being. Uh, made when it was being developed and they put 
the O.J. Simpson chase on the bar TVs. And they didn't get in trouble. That's funny. That's awesome. Yeah, games used to push the push the envelope. They were like Saturday Night Live used to be. Right. Used to be. Fuck. See what they can get away with. Uh, yeah, yeah, now they're just see. towing the line, yeah. Uh, we were talking, uh, actually, in the green room, before we even started talking, we were, were talking about the indelible marks that gaming has actually had in society. And, um, you know, not to get too much on the soapbox uh, and get pedantic as it was, but um, there's there's usually a huge-ass uproar about some game that is too risque or too adult, whatever, and we got the ESRB ratings. You know, I mean, we have Grand Theft Auto 3. Thank you, Rockstar, for that. Um, and, you know, so parents have the, the wherewithal to actually make an educated guess or an educated uh, or informed informed decision would be a better word uh, or term on purchasing, purchasing stuff for their kids. And I, I think Kish, you know, when you were, uh, was it you, Elmo, or Kish? Me. Yeah. I was working at GameStop. Yeah, and, and you know, like parents would come in and just buy shit right off the, uh, you know, not even do their due right diligence. Off the Nope. And not even knowing about it. Yeah, and just... then come back at us about oh, you didn't tell me that there was this, that, and the other in this game. It's like and I it's didn't like... have to because it's right on the fucking box, which right, dude. This reminds me. There was a prank call joke from oh god, probably at least fifteen years ago now, and it was talking about Grand Theft Auto, and my brother showed it to me, and we laughed our asses off. Like I still laugh my ass off when I listen to it, because uh, it's just this dude pretending to have like an Asian accent complaining about the xbox live services and all this shit complaining to microsoft like it was, mm-hmm. it was hilarious <laughs> back when you could actually get a hold of somebody <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. so i uh, made systems and shit yeah okay Super so friendly. so the thing that i'm uh the, the thing that i was driving at though with the whole esrb thing you know whatever is that our society is like you know they pass the buck you know like i you know like i said earlier you know we find excuses not not uh, excuses not to do a thing instead of excuses to do a thing. You know, we, we, oh, you know. I get what you're saying. It so, that. like, it's like you know, that game that they used to have. Um, it was uh, Playboy the Mansion. They're like, instead of blaming the people that bought the game for their children, they bought they blamed, well, why why would they ever make a game like that? No, well, see, that's the thing. It's like, you know, it's part of us a free society, okay? You know, uh, you know, corporations should be free to make whatever the fuck they want, right? It's on us, the consumers, to actually make and vote with our wallets. Not to get too right. much into it, but like, look at what happened. What's happening with Bud Light? Anheuser oh, Busch yeah. fucked around and found out, and now they're like crying. Oh, it wasn't a campaign. Just get the fuck out of here. No, you know, like you know. So if a if a game developer comes out and they come out with you know they throw whatever they fucking want in there. You know, there's there's banned games in many different countries. We're not going to touch oh, on those yeah. right now, but. You know, it's got, you know, oh, this is a teen game or, oh, this is an adult game, adults only, whatever. You know, me as a parent, right. I'm going to take a, a take a uh, an active interest in what my son is consuming. You know, whether it's, you know, he's, he's you know, food, drinks, you know, the things that he's watching on TV. I'm going to make that, I'm going to make that guess because that's my job. My The only job I have as a parent is to make sure I don't raise a freaking douchebag and a psychopath. That's it. That's all. So... Um, that's, that's, that, that's, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop up the freaking soapbox. It, well, I, I'm gonna need it for a little bit later in the, in the stream here, but, um, uh, so there's that. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we're TikToking, like, the good shit and the bad shit, right? Yeah. Let's talk about for the good your, shit. For your, inter- for your entertainment, I threw the link to that video in the comedy treatment, uh. Oh, you did? Discord, yep. It's five. It's five minutes long. It's hilarious. Just All right, for, for your entertainment and your free time. Right on. Right on. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. So, uh, let me let me let me bring up Discord real quick, and then um, we need to get back to the thread because uh, I I kind of lost the the plot here. Okay. So Elmo came up with camping out for game releases in Black Friday. That is a time ta- that that is a thing that is gone now. Do you remember seeing the freaking video or like the on the news? Do you remember seeing the news of like Call of Duty 4's game release and like in like hundreds of people being yes. outside of Best Buy? At that and shit? Uh, Call of Duty 4, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm done. 
the, the only the only the only two games like that I hung GTA out for was like Fallout or, Three and, and then and yeah. then Skyrim. Those are the only two games I actually went to a, a minute release party for. Really? Yep. Yeah. I've been to many. <laughs> But uh, while working for GameStop, well, it just seemed to find it's part of your job, man. Right, it's but, part. It's part of it. Yeah. So, um, the the two things we're gonna we're gonna we're we're actually going to we're gonna throw three things together here. Okay, land parties, couch co op, and the woes of split screen gaming. Now, so I'll say the woes of split screen gaming would definitely be screen peekers. I no, mean, that you know, no, that you know what is it, is a lot like bullying. There are two types of people in this world. Screen peekers <laughs> and dirty fucking liars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... um, There's two games that come to mind when you're talking about couch co-op and, and you know, the discipline and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, there's, there's GoldenEye 007 on the Nintendo 64, right? Definitely. I first played 007 on the PlayStation, but it still had couch co-op. Screen peeking was still the whole fucking. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember being on boat screen. in the military, and we were one of two shops on the boat that had a big screen, you know, one of those rear projector screens, or whatever, and we had a Nintendo 64 on there. And I was night check. Basically, I worked at night, and you know, after we got done, you know, making all of our gear ready for issue, we would just sit around and play Gold Knight for a whole fucking night. We didn't have any khakis, you know, or, or higher rank fellers, you know, breathing down our necks. And then we would have uh, power plants and, and uh, you know, you know, GSC fellers come in and we'd play mm-hmm. and or whatever. And it got, it got, it got heated. We couldn't drink on duty, but uh, I remember dying to odd job with the golden pistol. Now that's just cheating, man. That sucks. <laughs> okay. Was that? All right. Condemned smile. The person that got you, was he sitting next to you? Don't say it wasn't me. Nick wasn't there. Oh, really? See, if he was sitting next to you, you would have fucking like, oh, sorry, I'm allergic to idiots. <laughs> but that's part of it, right? Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, right? So yeah, he's 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 talking about family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking something else. Hey, man. It's all good. That's when you freaking get up and get in front of him, or just reach up and unplug his freaking his controller, <laughs> and like and then kill him. But fucking really odd job with the golden oh, pistol. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. You were unplugging your buddy's shit right at the end of freaking Mario Kart, like boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I remember, I remember getting really surgical with like the grenade launcher, on that really long. I think it was Aztec or Maya, where it would be really long. Like there's this really long ass hall and you know somebody's got the the clob you know sitting there just ready to freaking hose bullets down at you and you got this grenade launcher and you're like all right you could hear how far he was and you're like ah, i think he's about that far you just fucking shoot and that grenade would go up to the wall and if you ha- got your trajectories done pool is a good thing guys geometry Mwah. and you just sit there and freaking the you know all they see is this like this oblong object come at him and and then dead Oh god, that was so good. But uh, that that comes to mind, and the other co- couch co op that was really awesome. Of course, you know you know this is a no brainer. Uh, rock band or Guitar Hero. Oh dude, that was Definitely. awesome. I remember uh, I had two good friends of mine when I first came back back from the military. We would sit there, just you know, sit there and just veg out, drink our freaking uh, adult recreational beverages, and just sit there and play. And of course, Dream Theater came out, and that was my jam. I'm like, yeah, look at me, I'm doing this on hard, you know, whatever. And then my friend would be like, oh, you're doing that on hard, are you? And then he'd just reach over and he'd just touch a button on the on the axe, uh, and I'm and the like, whole thing's fucked. oh, and I really man, fun. I got so into it, I got so into it. That's the first time I ever contemplated giving, you know, committing murder with a plastic guitar <laughs> um, instrument. <laughs> yeah, I could just see the news now. <laughs> Washingtonian murders friend with plastic guitar. Yeah, no. But uh, what, what do you guys got for for this this segment? Uh well, I mean, I mean, we covered a lot. Couch co-op. Yeah, couch, couch co-op, co-op was pretty good. Yeah. I just kind of miss. You don't know what you got till it's gone type thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think that we were talking about it earlier. I feel like that's half the reason that people can't share anymore. 
Um, yeah. Because like it used to be, you know, you're playing uh, GTA, whatever it might be. Um, and it was, you know, oh, you got one life. Don't use any cheats, <laughs> you know, things like that. And then you had to pass the controller to your buddy so he could play. And, you yeah. know, it, it wasn't like it is nowadays where, you know, okay, you want to play GTA. You don't go to your buddies. You, you just go buy gta and then you hop online and go play with your buddies it's it's yeah. just different yeah a lot of those the guys who shirt, shoot first and ask questions later you know i mean they don't have somebody there in in the uh in the bit with them and right. and uh you know like if somebody you know screws up or, or or does something that's not agreed to they got peer pressure right there on the couch um there was there was um there's a lot of couch co-ops games that are, are current now um you know, like I'm probably gonna get some shade from you guys, but Diablo three was a pretty decent couch co op. I like I really enjoyed that one. Um, yeah. you know, and and uh there's there's another couch co op that I Just think pi they're pigeonholed is what it is. They it, are it is yeah. couch co op games are, are pigeonholed into literally like one style of game anymore. It's not like it yeah. used to be where like you know, like racing games and things like that, you know, everything had a co op feature of some sort. Well, co-op, couch co-op though, couch yeah. co-op. That's yeah. that's the that's the key. I mean, Ark Survival or, tried to do that, so like, yeah, I mean, I can't throw shade at them too much. I mean, there's some things that I don't like about that game, but uh, one of the things that was really tough for me anyway, because you know, gaming on a budget, is is you know that uh, that that server host tether. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I I enjoyed it for what it was, but. Well, the one thing that like really kind of pops out to me as far as like when I talk pouch co-op is like even like um, I remember when like the first Need for Speed Underground came out and like instead of, you know, you were racing against each other, but working together to do career mode with your buddies and everybody sitting there. All right, I'll do this race. You do this race. I'll do this race, you know, and passing it back and forth and like doing those career modes together because people used to actually hang out together. You know, um, I feel like that is a. I did. I did dying. that with Burnout wait, wait. on the original Xbox. I know Burnout was fun, yeah, but you know what? Burnout. I remember a Need for Speed, and it's still my fucking favorite. Excuse my American. That's just the way I feel. Hot Pursuit, Couch Co-op. Oh yeah. One guy in a cop car calling in freaking tax strips and shit like that, and then and then the guy that you're chasing is just sitting right next to you and like, haha, I'm, I'm so far ahead, you're not gonna catch me. Want to bet? You rip the controller out of their hands and freaking chuck it across. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! No, like I remember, I had a lot of couch co-ops. I mean, I played. I mean, Halo immediately comes to mind. Yes. Um, <laughs> so much Halo, Guitar Hero, like we already mentioned, um, mm -hmm. 007, Nightfire. Um, I played a lot of sports games with my brothers. Like, uh, oh yeah, all Madden. those back in the day. Couch yeah, co-op. That was like two K. All that shit. Next to somebody um, talking crap. <laughs> Modern, Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 2 just 1v1ing my brothers yeah. on Rust. And of course, oh, you're screen peeking to see, oh, where are they at? Okay, I'm going to fucking just try to jump yeah. off this thing. And there's I supposed to be right here, so I'm just going to jump off this and shoot him in the face. How do I get rid of focus? Oh, no. Oh, you don't want to focus on me? I see how it is. You click on him, dog. Yeah. Oh, learning has occurred. Woohoo. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll edit that out in post. <laughs> um so yeah that's that's about that all right oh uh cadet smile pops off with hunter wayward Re oh what hunter wayward reckoning was couch co -op was probably one. most missed thing out there finally got to destroy one of my little girls on super smash ultimate a while i know uh, right super, super, smash, smash, super smash oh dude melee i refuse melee on the freaking gamecube Mm. Yeah, I refuse to play Spelunky 2 with my daughter. She's 14 and she murders me on that all the time. And she giggles. <laughs> she's definitely my daughter. She goes, hey dad, go look over there. And then I look over there and then she's like, Phew. and then I get killed and she's laughing maniacally. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, bet. you can't spank me. I'm taller than you now. I'm like, want to bet? She goes, just kidding. Love you, daddy. <laughs> so, um, all that said, um, uh, do we have anything more to add? Um, I don't. Okay. Yeah, not really. Not particular. All right. So here's here's the point. We said save the best for last, and uh, hopefully we're gonna I can edit this down to like a twenty minute thing. But um, good luck with that. 
Hmm. Cratch Kish comes out with, uh, do you remember when days when you could state your opinion without worrying about being canceled? The good old days. The good old days. The remember when. That I remember. That is. You remember? Yeah, uh, I really wish that we could return to form. And just so we're all on the same page talking about the same shit, because we got to get our definitions right. <laughs> Cancel culture. It's the practice or tendency of engaging in mass canceling as a way of expressing disapproval and exerting social pressure. Okay, there's cancellation by uh, revoking your money. I mean, this is like a refined thing to the boycott. Okay, uh, anybody who knows my mom, uh, when she when she she believes in a boycott in her soul. She will get everybody that she knows to boycott a certain business or um, something mm -hmm. if they have done something wrong. Like, in her case, is Goodwill. All right, she used to work for Goodwill, placing jobs for the handicapped, and she saw a shit ton of corruption in there. Um, I'm not saying anything against the Goodwill uh, conglomerate or corporation or whatever, but locally, um, there was some nepotism going on there. And she was really trying her hardest to uh, put place jobs for the handicapped, people who didn't have arms or were de developmentally disabled. And in my experience, people who were like uh, of that those those are the people who can't naturally do it have a greater desire to to do the job and those who can do the job don't want to and they're they'll sit there and be on the government dole okay and she bent over backwards for a lot of her clients to to place jobs that they were suitable for i remember this blind guy uh he did you know it just i was working side by side with him you know because i was like i don't know 13 12 9 Somewhere in that age range, it's all a blur. You get old enough. But um, this guy was a hard freaking worker. This goes right back to what I was saying earlier. He finds an excuse to do a thing. He find, he identifies the problem, and he adapts or overcomes it. That's like the very essence of the Marine Corps model, adapt and overcome. Um, so the way it's, it, it, the way that's melded into a new thing is this cancel culture where somebody says something and uh you know they get deplatformed which is in my in my experience a disservice because we need to have freedom of speech you know um and and people who think wrongly like if i if i say something and i feel like i'm off my rocker i'll go to brick i'll go to kish i'll go to elmo i'll go to pack and I'm like dude i need you guys to write me a reality check and am i insane and I'll say something, you know, the, uh, you know, I mean, Brick has seen that, you know, whatever. And then he goes, eh, that might be a little extreme or whatever the case may be. And then he'll add his perspective. And now we have a dialogue. It keeps me sane. And that's why it's important for us men, women too, but men mostly, to actually talk amongst ourselves. Come up to, with a consensus. And, and be able to uh, alter our views or, or something you know that actually makes sense. So that's that's pretty much it. That's that's all I got for you guys. Uh, there you have it. Uh, the next Switch Side Chat is going to be uh, the the good, the bad, the ugly of Redfall. I know it's been catching a lot of flack um, the last couple of weeks, and rightly so. But uh, I, I think I might have a, a different take on it. It's something unique anyway. Uh, definitely tune in for that this week. Um, also, uh, another thing that we've been working on, well, I've been working on, uh, is uh, new grounding content. Um, Obsidian has been knocking it out of the park, and I've had to rewrite my script a few thousand times. I'm actually looking at it right over here on the other screen. But anyway, until next time, guys, stay out of trouble. It's a full-time job, but the pay sucks, but the benefits are worth it. Take it easy, guys.